We praise just for another opportunity to be in your house. We bless you for what you're about to do. We bless you for your people, oh God, that have a heart to tune in or to be here tonight. Father, that you would bless them with your word and you would cause their eyes to be open to your truths. And we bless you, oh God, for the answers that they need in advance. We thank you right now for tonight. And we thank you that we will leave here different in some way. And it's a good difference. And we bless you for it right now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Come on, bless him in the house tonight. Come on. That's right. Give him praise, man. Glory and honor. We just sang the song, I'm desperate for you. Hallelujah. Well, amen. He's here. <laughs> He said, he said it in his word. He said, when two or three of us are gathered together in his name, he says, I'm there. I'm there in the midst. So if you desperate, amen, like you just sang that song, praise God, he's here to deliver. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Well, bless God. We thank God for each and every one of you being here tonight. You may be seated. We thank God for our Facebook Live family. Amen. Let's put our hands together for them tonight. God bless you. Amen. We're excited that you joined us tonight from whatever platform you're joining us with. We, we give God the praise for you. Amen. And we would love for you to be here with us physically in the sanctuary. Amen. Hey, we got plenty of space. Everything is lovely. Come out. Amen. Come to the house of the Lord and worship with us in person. Amen. You know, this Sunday coming up, Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Listen, we're going to have a good time in the Lord. We're going to be here, man, and we are going to worship and praise his holy name. Amen. So make sure, amen, if you can be in the house on Sunday morning, please be there. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a shout and a praise again tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Well, bless God. Amen. We are excited about this week and this whole event that we celebrate every every year. Amen. And you know, Sunday is Resurrection Sunday, and, you know, even as we study the, the Word of God, we go through, and we see there was events that led up to that. Amen? And all of those events, they all are very significant. Amen? And we obviously, in one setting, we can't cover them all. Amen? You can't exhaust it. But, you know, sometimes we need to just kind of really understand certain things that happen, um, and we need to understand, you know, what it means to us today. What, what, what does that mean to us now? And so tonight, I'm going to take a look at something, but we're going to go further than just, amen, looking at what happened that week. We're we going all the way back to Egypt. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> amen. We're going back a little bit. Amen. Amen. So we're not just going to talk about what happened in Resurrection Week, but we're going to talk about the significance of that and how that relates, amen, to what happened a long time before that. Amen. Well, I want you to turn to John chapter 1, verse 29. Man, we're excited that you're here with us tonight. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter 1, verse 29. I'm reading out the New King James Version. Now, I hope you have your Bible with you. Amen. We always want you to have your Bible presence. Be able to turn, look, see. Amen. Pastor's not making this stuff up. It's in the Bible. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We want you to know it's there, amen, and then you'll be able to mark it down and go back and study again. Everything that we're teaching and preaching, amen, is online. You're able to listen to the, to the messages again and again and again. Stop, rewind, amen. So there's no reason for us not to get some good studying in when the word of God goes forth, amen. John chapter 1, verse 29, the Bible says, watch this. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him. Now, this is John the Baptist, Amen. John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Wow. That's a bold statement. Especially during that time, if you remember, if you're a Bible reader, amen, and you know that the Pharisees, amen, emphatically did not believe that sin can, it can only be done covered and it can only happen a certain way. So for them, for John to make a statement like that, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Huh? Even how they rebuked Jesus when he told them a couple of times who he was. And they rebuked him. 
Amen. But let's look at something else. John chapter 1, verse 36. This is still John again. And the Bible says, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. Well, John is very persistent and consistent, if you will. He said it twice. Look, behold, I mean, look, the Lamb of God. And the first time he said the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So it wasn't like he was hallucinating. It was a hot day and John needed to drink some water. Now, John knew exactly what he saw and who he saw. And John's depth of understanding who Jesus was was greater at that time than anyone else. Because John was sent for that purpose, the very purpose to make way for him that was coming. John knew who he was. Behold, the Lamb of God. You know, it's like, you know, you know how you meet somebody, hey, amen, you heard about them or whatever, huh? And maybe, you know, some of your friends, they got a kid in college or something, and then they come home for the holidays, and y'all bump into each other at the mall. And then, you know, your friend says, hey, this is my daughter I've been telling you about. And then you look at him and say, well, I finally get a chance to meet you. So you can relate to that, right? Okay, well, John said, I finally get a chance to meet you. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Now, I just want you to think about something. If God told you something, that you had a dream tonight, and God spoke something to you in a dream, you had a prophetic dream about something that was going to happen, and you know it was God. You know how I ain't talking about like, well, I had a dream last night. I ain't quite sure. I don't know if it was me or did I eat something. No, I ain't talking about no, 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 no. You know the dream I'm talking about when you know it was God. When you wake up and there ain't no doubt that was God. You would be looking for that thing to happen. Wouldn't you? I would. Because if God said it and I know it was God that said it, I'm looking for it to take place. Are you listening to me? So John knows something and it just happened. He just saw it. It was just revealed. And now John is revealing this to people that don't know. So what is this Lamb of God? What is this phrase? And what is this thing all about? Why would he call him that? Why didn't he just say, behold, Jesus? <laughs> that name didn't have no significance. Huh? Other than if you go in the Old Testament and it says his name shall be called. Other than that, that name would not. No. Nah. So what is the significance of what John is saying? And better yet, how does that pertain to you and I today? Amen. I thought you'd be a little bit more excited, but it's okay. Hallelujah, man. Amen. Well, let's, let's, let's do some investigating here. Is that all right? Let's go to Exodus chapter 12. Now, you know Resurrection Sunday coming up, amen. And every preacher that preaches, amen, there are a whole lot they'll want to say on Sunday, but they'll be led by the Spirit, we prayerfully believe, and they'll say what the Holy Spirit have them saying. There'll be a whole lot left that's not said. You're not going to exhaust the subject. Are you listening to me? There is so much about just surrounding that whole event. Amen? Because, I mean, I could this week just talk about the events that happened the week. Amen. I mean, Passover week. Because that right there is very interesting if you start going back and seeing everything that happened every day leading up to it. You ever thought about, well, I wonder what happened on Wednesday since we're here on a Wednesday night. I wonder what happened on Wednesday. Do you know that some people call Wednesday Spy Wednesday? Did you know that? Because that was supposedly the day that Judas showed his hand, I guess, to the rest of them. Jesus already knew who he was. Huh? So, you know, yeah, it, some people call it Spy Wednesday. Mm-hmm. The spy, Judas. <laughs> Praise God. 
So there's a whole lot to talk about, amen, but we're going we gonna, we gonna to do what the Holy Ghost is saying for us tonight. Is that all right? Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible says, watch this. He says, now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. Man, we've been talking a lot about Egypt lately. Have you noticed that? Huh? And you know, Egypt re represents the world. It represents the world system. It also represents bondage and slavery. Huh? It, let me share a quarter of time. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, let, let, nah, nah, we're passing the slavery days over. Hold up. Stop. Honey, if you broke as a joke and can't pay your bills and can't do nothing nice, can't even buy yourself a pretty dress, you in financial slavery. You know why I say that? Because Jesus said, let the poor say, um, so don't tell me slavery is over. You talking about the slavery of when African Americans was enslaved or whatever the case may be. They were slaves all the way back in Bible day. I ain't talking about, I'm talking about the kind of slavery, amen, when Jesus says, listen, listen, the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. I'm talking about you having the abundant life in every area of your life. So don't you sit here and tell me that slavery don't still exist. Amen. Some of us enslaved to what the doctor said. I didn't say the doctor was wrong with his diagnosis. I didn't say that. But I am saying you enslaved because you don't understand that there's a great physician, amen, that's higher than your doctor. Oh, boy, here we go. Right. Let me get back here. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of month. Man, God get ready to restart the calendar. Did you hear him? He said, this month going to be your beginning of the month. He getting ready to restart the calendar. Okay, so what do you think? Even though God getting ready to restart his calendar, do you think the world system, Egypt, you think they're going to restart there? You, you ain't hearing me. See, this is two different systems already right in your face. Because the world so he, Pharaoh ain't trying, he only want to let them go. Much less you're talking about going to listen to somebody talking about re changing the calendar? Are you serious? No, God said, you're going to restart this thing. Because there's going to be some events going to take place, unlike any events you've ever seen before. In other words, you're getting ready to have a brand new beginning. Hmm? Some of you in here right now, you need a new beginning. You lost your joy. You don't lost your happiness. You don't lost your excitement. You don't like, I mean, you just do, you, you go through the most and then you check, okay, read the Bible, check, I prayed, check, I gave, check, I went to church, but you ain't excited no more. Uh, I'm going to preach and make myself happy whether you get happy or not. I got some Facebook Live people. They shouting right now. They write it when they shout. Amen. Praise God. Every time you get excited, you write shout up on that thing so we can go back and look at it. Amen. No, no, no. He said this is going to be the beginning, man. Something getting ready to change. This is your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. What? They going to have a new New Year's Day. I don't think you hear me. God getting ready to reset their life. <laughs> Come on, people. Y'all know about this in the natural. Huh? Sometimes you got to restart your computer. Huh? You, hopefully you got everything on autosave, so when you restart it, it's still there. Now, we don't want nothing to be there. Restart everything old, bad, delete. Restart brand new. You know how your computer is when you ain't got nothing on it real fast? Restart. Hallelujah. He said, this is going to be the first. You're getting ready to get a restart. Amen. Yeah, man, this is going to be the first month of the year to you. He says in verse 3, speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, on the 10th of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, hmm, according to the house of his father, hmm, and a lamb for a household. Wow. In verse 4, he says, and if the household is too small for the lamb, 
let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Okay, so John is saying in the New Testament, behold the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And then he said it again, Behold, the Lamb of God said it twice. I wonder if that lamb got anything to do with this lamb. <laughs> I, matter of fact, I hope somebody's watching this for the very first time. Amen. And you don't know the answer to that question because this is going to be so exciting to you. Because you're going to say, I did not know that was in the Bible. Matter of fact, if you have seen this before, you still going to see some stuff you didn't know was in the Bible. Because God going to open your eyes up and reveal something to you tonight. Are you listening to me? He said in verse 3, every man, say every man, shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father. Then he said a lamb for the household. A lamb for the household. So this lamb is supposed to cover Everybody in the household. <laughs> oh, you're going to get excited in a little while because some of y'all got some members in your household that ain't living right. But I'm going to show you about this lamb, how powerful this lamb of God is in the Old Testament. And then I'm going to show you if it was that powerful in the Old Testament, can you imagine how powerful it is now? It was a lamb for the household. It was a lamb for the entire house. Matter of fact, watch this. I know you ain't never looked at it this way. But he said at first, he says, according to the house of his father. His father. His father. His father would be my children's grandfather. Oh, you think I'm in the house and my children ain't in there with me? So that we know automatically if a man is taking a lamb, his children and his wife and the children is in there right or wrong. But now this is according to his father. So grandma and granddaddy included in this thing too. Some of you don't understand the power that you have in intercessory prayer concerning unsaved loved ones. I'm going to try to help you out tonight showing you what God showed me. This is when I started to rest real well about people that's unsaved in my family. Because I started to realize I'm not helpless. Because what the devil tried to do is hoodwink you and tell you, well, you know, everybody got a free will. There ain't nothing you can do. That's a lie from hell. Because he take and twist the word. That's what he always do. You have power. I don't see so many unsaved people that was unsaved and then they got saved. Just because, honey, I'm one of them. Are you listening to me? I won't always say, I won't raised up saved from this high. I was in church, but I won't save. Amen. I submit to you, there are a whole lot of people that go to church that ain't saved. Amen. He says, listen, listen, listen. Every man take a lamb. According to the house of his father, a lamb for the household. So that tells me God is concerned about whole families being saved. God is concerned about entire families. Honey, let me tell you something. I done seen this happen. We interceded for my grandfather. On his deathbed, my sister went and led him to Christ. And he was on his deathbed when he received Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen. Might not happen when you want it to happen. There's a whole lot of testimonies of people like that. They went right up to the wedding. Now, don't you know that's the grace of God, man? You a couple of breaths from hell, eternity. You kidding me? You ain't but a couple of breaths from eternal damnation? And you give your life to Christ and go to heaven just like y'all have been saved 40 years? See, religious folks, they struggle with I just don't know if you've been doing all that mess for all them years, and you think just because you're scared now, you pray and ask the Lord and say he just don't. See, that's religion. That's religion 101, 201. How do they do it in college? 101, 201, 301, and 401. And then we get the master M01 and doctorate D01. That's religion. 
because we don't understand the blood and we don't understand God's mercy. And you think, again, don't you sit here and tell me if somebody pray amen, hallelujah, in their last second. They people that probably have died that y'all, the last time you saw them, they won't say it. But you don't know what happened after that car hit that car and how long they was alive before they stopped breathing. You don't know what happened. You better watch your mouth how you talking about somebody. I know they went to hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lamb for the household. Huh? A lamb for the household. God is good. Everybody in the house. So, 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 so that night, the deaf angel came through. And if you were inside of the house, The doors had been marked with the blood of a lamb, an innocent lamb, a lamb that had no blemishes, had no spot, an animal lamb. And the doors were, the, the lintel and the doorpost, which if you connect the dots would make a cross. And then the lamb that was killed was roasted by fire. And there's some other instructions that go with that. But the gist of the if you were behind the door that had blood on the doorpost, when the deaf angel came through, the firstborn would not perish. And that was from Pharaoh down to the lowest slave. So can you imagine? You in your house. Ain't like your house now. Not, not, some of y'all know you live in apartments and you can hear what the neighbor looking at on TV next door. Walls kind of thin. You know what I'm talking about, right? I ain't picking at nobody. I'm just being honest now because I done lived there before. Huh? So you hear hollering and wailing and yelling and because the firstborn just died. That came through and it took the firstborn out next door and you hear the hollering. The screaming. You hear it all over the neighborhood. And then it gets to your door and it's got blood on it. Inside of the house, mama, daddy, big Johnny, big Susie. You know, I normally say little Johnny, little Susie, right? Now I'm saying big Johnny and big Susie. There's a reason. Because, you know, when you get older, then you start doing stuff you ain't got no business doing. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just saying. The family's in there. Regardless of what they have done, regardless of what they are, they're in the house that has blood on the doorpost. And the deaf angel passed over him. He didn't stop. And knock on the door and say, how many people you got in here ain't living right? Now, nah. he passed over, that's where he passed, he passed over that door, that house. That entire house, don't get lost in this word, don't get ready to say, that entire house was saved that night. I said that night. I didn't say they were saved going to heaven. I said they were saved that night. Because this is a shadow. This is a type of something. Everybody in the house. <clears throat> well, you think everybody in there was good? You don't think there was nobody in the house that did nothing wrong? Boy, it's quiet in the Baptist church. You, you don't think there was nobody in the house that, that, that was, you think everybody was just, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. No, that's what you think? We know Jesus hadn't came yet, but you understand what I'm saying? Now, everybody in the house, everybody in the house, imagine, i tell you what, let's go to some of y'all houses since you seem like you're struggling to understand this one. Let's go to some of your houses. 
Use your imagination. You got relatives. You got people that don't live with you. You've been to their house before. Huh? Let's go to some of their houses where you got, you know, maybe the mama is the only one saved. Daddy ain't saved. Children ain't saved. Everybody acting a fool. Pick at mama because she pray all the time and go to church. She dressed funny, wearing them old long dresses. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. All right, so yeah, now, okay, let's pretend that was the house. And it's got blood on the doorpost. Uh-huh, yeah, mm-hmm. And it came and it passed over. Wouldn't seem fair, would it? You ain't going to say amen tonight. And I understand why. Because you don't know the scripture. I'm going to just call it like it is. Yeah, you don't. See, I don't sock you up. Now the Holy Ghost sock you up. Because now I'm going to show you why you're scared to say amen. You're scared to say amen because what you're scared is I'm going to say people saved just because they was in the house. Well, they were physically saved that night. But that's a shadow and a type of something else that Jesus did for us that you got to partake of. Hmm. Watch this. <laughs> I noticed it said in verse 4, if the household is too small for the lamb. If the household is too small for the lamb. The lamb ain't never too small for the household. Oh, no, the house can be too small for the lamb. Again, we're talking shadow and tight. The lamb ain't never too small for the house. If the household is too small for the lamb. <laughs> he always more than you need, trust me. Always. Mm-hmm. So this feast... This night, this happened the night before the Israelis or the Israelites left Egypt. This was the night before they left. This is what took place. Huh? The death angel, the destroyer went through the land killing the firstborn. A man and beast. Not just man, beast also. So he, man and beast, firstborn. Bishop talked about firstborn, first fruits a little couple weeks ago, how important that is. Every one of them was taken out unless they were covered or they were in that house that had blood on the doorpost and on the lintel. And it was only those households that were spared. They were the only ones that, that, that the firstborn was spared. Because that's what the deaf angel came to visit. It was the firstborn. Are you listening to me? Hmm. So why is John hollering in that many years later, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world? What is the significance of Jesus term lamb of God and its most powerful phrase taking away the sin of the world hmm I want you to see something because this is important to understand because sometimes we don't think that God is concerned about our loved ones we see and we've done the best that we know how to do and they still seemingly go astray. You've raised them right. You've taught them the best you know how. Okay, yeah, you weren't perfect. Nobody is. But you've done the best you know how to do. Even if you didn't do the best you know how to do, you were saved, amen, praise God, and you believe in God that your children be saved. And while you had authority over them, amen, praise God, and they were living under your roof, you drug them to church. Huh? Huh? Made them go, even though their lips might have been stuck out a half a mile. Amen. You didn't care. Get in the car. Get up. Get dressed. You going to church. Period. Huh? And sometimes we think, well, they're 18 now. They grown. I can't tell them, you know, they don't live under my roof no more. Whatever the case may be. And we don't realize the power that we have as parents that saved. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. 
I ain't going to read all this, but I'm going to read enough of it for you to get the gist. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. For some of you parents that staying up late at night, worrying about your children. The Bible says, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but now they are holy. Whoa, 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 wait a minute here, preacher. What do you mean they now holy? I, I didn't write this. I didn't write this. So then when one of the members of the one of the members of that family, that their, their, their father or the mother is a believer, it sanctifies the other person. We need to take that out of the Bible. <laughs> you, whoa, 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 whoa. You, 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 maybe we should read it again. Let's read it slower. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But now they are holy. You are kidding me. So you mean to tell me, even though you got that unbelieving husband that's acting a fool, won't go to church, don't care nothing about no church, huh? give you a hard time about going to church, especially when you start talking about some tithes and offering. You sitting up there getting your money, that preacher, we sitting up here, can't even hardly pay these bills. I don't know, you just can't see it all, can you? Oh, yeah, somebody felt that one, didn't you? you yeah, somebody felt that one. Yeah, you know them arguments. Yeah, you know them arguments. Huh? That's my money. You ain't taking my money up there and getting no preacher. He live better than we do. And you giving your money to them church. You do anything they say, don't you? You want me to keep going? I'm on a roll right now. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling the truth. Because there's some arguments in a lot of houses. I know, honey. I done seen them, heard them. Huh? Unbelieving husband. Or sometimes it's an unbelieving wife. Are you kidding me? So what does that unbelieving husband or what does that believer in the family have to hang their hat on? I can tell you God ain't going to leave them by themselves even though they're in a situation. Because think about it. Think about two unbelievers that get married. They both was unbelievers. They got married. God won't even in the picture. They was unbelievers. Now one of them gets saved. You know, you can't say they was unequally yoked because they were both un unbelievers when they got married. But then one of them gets saved. And the other one didn't get saved. And at first it's like, okay, that's good. I'm glad for you. Where are you going? I'm going to Bible study. On Wednesday? <laughs> what you mean? You ain't got no business out there driving in that dark on a Wednesday night. Then they come home. Where you been? At church? This late? What kind of Bible study? What kind of church is that? I ain't never seen no church hold that long. And now what's supposed to be the greatest thing ever happened to you starts to be a time of persecution. You're being persecuted for his name's sake. Oh, he ain't saying it like that. She ain't saying it like that, but that's what's happening. The devil trying to make you think you, you, you and then he'll whisper in your ear while you're in the bed. You know, you know that. Let me see, can I do it? Okay, king side bed. You all the way left. He all the way right. And that ain't far enough. So then you do the whole back thing. Bam! Okay, you you at the edge of the bed and you got your back turned. That's about as far as you can go. Somebody's going to have to get out of the bed after that. 
And then the devil whispered, you were doing better than your marriage before you started going to church. Maybe that's not the right church. Maybe you're misunderstanding what the pastor's saying, or maybe he doesn't know. Let me, let me throw this in there. <laughs> that's a snake sizzle. <laughs> Oh, he started to whisper in your ear. He started trying to make you second guess your decision to get saved. Because your spouse ain't happy about it. You got counsel. If somebody read this scripture to you, and little Johnny and little Susie, or big Johnny and big Susie, they was acting worse after you got saved than ever before. I don't want to go. Dad, do I have to? Why are you making them children go? Just because you want to go. You know how you making them children? Don't you know this is a school night? You want me to stop, don't you? This is hard on you, ain't it? Now, the reason you're hearing this is because there's somebody you're going to come in contact with, and they got these problems, and these are real. And they don't know what to do. And they don't know how to handle it. Come on, man. Everybody was it. God is concerned about the entire household. That's why I had to go there first. It was the whole household. He's concerned about the whole family. Okay, stop, stop, stop. The deaf angel was coming through to destroy the firstborn, right or wrong? So then why everybody else in the house got to be in the house if they want the firstborn? If he ain't concerned about the whole household, then what's the big deal? Matter of fact, you should be able to sit on the sidewalk while you're coming through. Be like, hey, what's up, doc? So you ain't looking for me because I was the third one in my family born. I'm good to go. No. No, no, no. Everybody. Everybody had to be on the other side of the door, even if you want the firstborn. God is concerned about entire family. And he'll do everything he can to make you think you the reason why your children going left or right or your spouse is acting crazy or whatever. He'll do everything he can to make you think you the reason why. This is why you need to hear this. And if you ain't got that problem, God bless you. But again, you will come in contact with people that do. So don't be selfish. And some of y'all been delivered from it and you know what I'm talking about. Because you used to live there. It was your address. Sit up here and act like you cute. Hey Amen. Come on, man. This stuff is real. See? So, I mean, even in this situation, they still got to give their life to Christ. But look, 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 look. One of the things that you as a believer, I know I did, you, you always concerned about what if something happened before they get saved. What if they get in an accident or something before they get saved? Before they give their life. You see what I'm saying? No, 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 no. Sanctified means what? Set apart. And then he turned around and called it at the bottom. Now they are holy. That means they set apart. Set apart. God put a mark on them. I said he put a mark on them. Wait a minute. Hold up. See, see. You, I don't know why we act like we never read the Bible before. Um, do we remember Cain and Abel? Mm -hmm. So what did God do to Cain? Now Cain done killed his brother. He had a mark on him, didn't he? When God put a mark on him, he ain't nothing going to touch you. He had a mark on him. So when God put a mark on you, you good. They might, you might die and they still ain't saved. But that mark, holla shit cloth. I led my younger brother to Christ. My mom and dad was already in heaven. And I led him to Christ. And I remember us all standing in the living room saying, man, we wish mom and daddy could have been here. And somehow I know they know. 
Because I, Bishop, I can see, I can see Father God and, and Jesus saying, I told you I keep my word. Telling them that they're looking down. I told you I keep my word. You, you, you can count on me when I say, yeah. I heard your prayers all them nights. And all the siblings were standing in the living room holding hands, and we led the last one to Christ. So he was the last one of the children to get saved. Hey, share my mom. And I was preaching to him last night. He kept me awake while I was driving back from Atlanta. All right, man, what you up to? Let's talk about Jesus. <laughs> hey, Shabbatka. On fire for the Lord, man. So, 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 no. Mm -mm. Stop letting the devil hoodwink you and think you, you helpless because your children. No, 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 because no, you got an unbelieving spot. No. Mm -mm. Do you realize that there's people that are stay away from church because they're afraid of this? They'll stay away because they're afraid of this very repercussion that we're talking about tonight. And so that's the reason why they don't get, because the other one, the spouse, don't, has no interest in nothing to do with God. And so they stay away from it because they already know it's going to be a problem. So tell me what you're going to do when you come in contact with those people. Now you got something to talk about. You can reassure them, show them what the word of God is. Show them the love of God. That's the key. To show them the love of God. Come on, man. They want they they see right now children need, they need they need more than they're able to give them in the natural. They can they, they they're able to see that. And they know that the only way they're gonna get more, they don't know no more. They need the church to help them. Now they want to give, get involved with God and Jesus. Because they're looking at their children. Their children are, are, are going the wrong way. But they know there's resistance at the spouse level. I've ministered to a whole lot of people where there was one person that cared nothing about God and the other one was saved. So I know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what I promise you I know what I'm talking about. And it's hard. Especially when you are fairly new and you don't know the word. Now, when you're a seasoned saint, you know, something happened, you walk by, shout by, 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 cool, there, and you keep right on going. But when you don't know no better, the devil play with you. Because you don't know. And have you think you did something wrong. Or you're doing something wrong, if you would. Amen. Wow. So, so, so. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 8 real quick. Verse 6. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. It says, but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry. Inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. Okay, now, so wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. So, under the old covenant, now I'm going to remind you of something. I'm just going to do a little theology check real quick. When the Israelites were delivered out of Egypt or out of Pharaoh's control. Had the law been given yet? Say no. you exactly right. It hadn't. Everybody got that right. I can't believe it. <laughs> Sometimes I want to hear a kid get it right now so bad, I just tell them what it is. <laughs> That's for me. <laughs> so the law hadn't been given yet, right? So technically, it ain't under the law. So you remember that conversation that Father God had with Abraham that night under the stars? When he was in this deep trance and the horror came on him 
about, and, and God the Father told him what was going to happen. Remember that? So as we look at Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as we look at that covenant that the fathers was under, that was grace all day and twice on Sunday. But that was grace before Jesus came and redeemed and gave fallen man his rightful place back. Are you listening to me? So, better covenant with better promises. So, 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 watch this now. So, they were delivered that night. Not under the law, because they weren't under the law yet. Are you listening to me? They weren't under the law yet. The night they got delivered, they weren't under the law. The law hadn't been given yet. They hadn't even got to Mount Sinai yet. And we under a better covenant than that. I know because we always talk about, you know, we ain't under the law. Okay, I ain't even talking about the law. I'm talking about it was grace before then. Sin was in the world, but because they want no law, guess what? Man was getting away with stuff. They want no law. It won't impute it. Listen, listen. Sin wasn't imputed because there wasn't no law yet. It won't that sin won't in the world. It was in the world. Come on, man. Look at the story of Noah. Look at Cain. We were just talking about Cain. Look what he did. Come on, man. I mean, your, your father is Adam. You kidding me? You don't get much closer to God than that. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Huh? You were talking about how, how far down the line you hit, man. Your father is actually Adam. You ought to know better. Amen. So we under a better covenant with better promise. So if they on that night was delivered because they were placed behind a door and the blood of an innocent lamb without spot or blemish a lamb that was sacrificed for the household and the blood placed on the doorpost and the lintel, which makes a cross. And they were protected from the destroyer under that covenant before Jesus was manifested and his body was offered as a sacrifice. Because then that lamb, animal lamb, bah, bah, that lamb was the one that night that was sacrificed. And it was a bunch of them. And it was the blood of an animal that was put on the doorpost and the lintel. And even the blood of an animal lamb that was without spot or blemish caused the destroyer to pass over that house. How much more today, a shikrata, how much more today in the new covenant, a born again believer that has confessed Jesus Christ as his or her Lord and Savior, how much more today are they protected from the destroyer? Because they under the blood. I said because they covered by the blood. They've been, listen, listen, they've been made free by Jesus' blood. They don't have to worry about the destroyer. How many of you know there's a whole lot of destroyers right now? COVID-19, one of them. <laughs> people don't like when you say that. Yeah, you, you, when you talk like that, though, there's so many people that die. I'm talking to the people, that's a lie. Let the dead bury the dead. You people get me with that stuff, man. 
You sit there and mourn and, and bellyate and try to explain why somebody died instead of being concerned about the people that's still alive. How about you find out what God is saying to the ones that's alive? Instead of trying to explain why somebody did or didn't die. I know you don't like this preaching, but it's okay because you ain't my master. <laughs> I love you too. Amen. Make sure you follow me on Facebook. <laughs> How much more? It's the blood, man. So see, Sunday all over the world, people will celebrate. He is risen. But you got to back up to Friday when that blood was shed. You got to back up to Friday because that's what John was talking about, the Lamb of God. Without spot, without blemish. He didn't know no sin. He didn't do no sin, and they won't neither was any sin found in him. He didn't do nothing wrong. And his body was offered as a sacrifice for you and I to take away, not just you and I, but the sin of the entire world. Once and for all. And that sacrifice is still strong today. That blood is still strong today, just as strong today as it was the first day. That blood is still protecting and saving the day just like it was the first day. Amen. Are you listening to me? So don't, 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 don't let people walk around you sad and blue because they don't understand the power that they have as a believer because they as a believer need to understand or, or if they're not a believer why they need to become a believer because honey you can be the sanctifying person in that family you got to give your life to Jesus P to protect your family until while you praying they come to Christ you love your husband that's, that, that's an unbeliever? Give your life to Christ and start interceding for him. Give your life to Christ and start interceding for your children. Huh? You love your wife that's an unbeliever, but you, you feel God tugging at your heart and pulling you and telling you, I'm knocking at the door and I want to come in? Give your life to Christ and start interceding for your wife. Give your life to Christ and start interceding for your children. Don't you listen to the world and say you don't have no, you, 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 listen, there's nothing you can do. There's a whole lot you can do. It's the power that's in the blood of Jesus. Cleansing blood, sanctifying blood, saving blood. One more scripture, can you handle it? The pastor, if you don't fuss at us when you're reading it. John chapter 8, verse 36. I'm just motivated. I wish y'all would have played sports. If y'all would have played sports and had one of them hard coaches, you would understand when you hear the delivery, it ain't personal. Actually, it is personal. But I want to see you get it, and I want to see you succeed. Are you listening? Just like a coach in the locker room, he want to see his team win. Winning is better than losing, I promise you. John chapter 8, verse 36. Watch this. The Bible says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Honey, let me tell you something. There is a freedom in the blood of Jesus. And it's a freedom, amen, because a debt, a sin debt was paid that you could not pay. I couldn't pay it. You couldn't pay it. No man or woman could pay it. But Jesus came in the form of a man, and he paid that sin debt in full. A body was prepared for him to offer. That's why John said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. You ought to give him a shout and a praise. Hallelujah. My God in heaven.
Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Well, guess what? It's not too late. If you're listening to this message tonight, it's not too late. Amen. You can be on that other side of that door, amen. Praise God. You are prayer away from being on the other side of that door and being safe and protected. You're only one prayer away. Are you listening to me? Let me get some soft music. Hallelujah. you one prayer away. And tonight, I'm going to pray with you. Me and these lovely people in this congregation that care so much about you and your life, amen, salvation. We want to see you saved. We want to see your family saved. We want to see you and your family protected. Are you listening to me tonight? Hallelujah. So we're going to pray this prayer tonight. And we're going to believe that your eyes have been opened. And you realize there's a need for me to put my trust and my faith in this name, Jesus. Because he is the Lamb of God that took my sins away. And when I put my trust in him, I'm just like those Israelites that were behind that door on that night of the Passover. All of these things, amen, that come to attack me, I can believe God that they'll pass over me because when they come to me, they'll see that I'm marked with the blood. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, come on, I want you to pray it with me. Tonight, I make a decision to receive Jesus as my Passover lamb. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and He died to take my sin away. So Father, tonight I ask you to save me. I want to be protected just like those Israelites that we just read about. So we thank you tonight for saving them. And we thank you tonight that I can be assured that every disease, every sickness, everything evil will see the blood of Jesus on me and pass over me too. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hands together and give God a shout and a praise. Well, they're excited, amen, because if you prayed that prayer tonight, God saved you. The Bible says Abraham believed God, and God says you're righteous. And tonight, when you gave your life to Christ, you became the righteousness of God in him. He said, well, Pastor, I ain't did nothing good yet. Well, it ain't about you doing nothing good. It's about the good that Jesus did. You're righteous because of him. It's his righteousness, not yours. You become a partaker of that righteousness. So tonight we're excited about what God has done for you. The Bible says that the angels in heaven, amen, they're rejoicing because you got saved tonight. There's a party going on in heaven all because of you and the decision that you made. So I want you to write us. We want to get in on it. Write us, call us, tell us about it, email us. Tell us what happened. Amen. We want to be excited with you. And then once again, I want to give you an opportunity, amen, if you live in this area, come be with us in a live service. Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. We're going to have a good time under our man of God, Bishop Dr. Wayne Bath. It's going to be a powerful word. It's going to go forth. We know that already, and we want you to be a part of it. Amen. We love you. We appreciate you. Amen. And by the way, those of you, amen, that's watching, don't forget to give. Amen. We need your support, your financial support in order for us to continue to do what we're doing. Amen. And we thank God for those of you that has been given. We got several different ways. If you go to our website, you'll be able to see ways that you can give. Amen. We got e-giving. It's right at the top of the screen. You'll be able to see it even tonight. 
We love you. We appreciate you. Amen. And we look forward to seeing you here in this sanctuary with us. God bless you, and we hope to see you Sunday morning. Put your hands together for our visitors. Put your hands together for our Facebook Live family. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Amen.